All right, this is episode two of So I Bought a Gold Mine. <laughs> so this weekend I was in uh, Victoria, British Columbia with my training company doing an event. And uh, I flew into Vancouver. I'm just in the Vancouver airport right now. And Joe Briere, my business partner, one of the co-owners, flew in from Comox to meet me here. And Will Travis flew in from Toronto. Uh, and they're waiting for me at the South Terminal right now. In order to get up to Likely, we're heading up to Likely. And on this trip, we're probably going to spend six to $700,000 on uh, new equipment for the mine and we're going to be going through an application to uh, get water from a river that's nearby through the Ministry of Natural Resources and we're getting our, our game plan together. We're literally 30 days from starting to mine. So I'm going to do the same thing I did last time, take you on this journey with me. Let's get started. All right, while I'm uh, heading over to the South Terminal, let me take a minute and talk to you about how we're financing this because there's a lot of lessons that you're going to learn along the way and it's not going to be all about mining gold, although that's what's probably got your attention. So this business, uh, we're buying it for $1.3 and we're uh, putting about $700,000 in additional equipment on site so we can increase the yield of the mining. So you add those things together, that's $2, $2 million. And then we decided that there's going to be a lot of incidentals that come up along the way. Today we're going to pick up a 2019 Toyota Tundra uh, pickup truck that we're going to be using as the site vehicle. Joe is actually moving up to the site. So we did a budget and we decided we needed to raise $500,000 for operating costs while we started mining. Now, for something like this, getting traditional financing from a bank would be impossible. So I went out to my network of friends and family and we raised $2.5 million uh, through a loan and a royalty agreement. So what that means is everybody that put the money in, there's about 12 of my friends that did, they're gonna get paid 12% interest for two years. And then on top of that, we've signed royalty agreements with them, which means in addition to the interest, they're gonna get $176,000 worth of gold. Now that gold will be paid to them as we mine it. And we set up an agreement that says we'll uh, give them as much gold as we can every quarter until they've each gotten $176,000. Uh, sorry, that's $176,000 for every $100,000 they invest. So we had one lender that lent two grand so they're gonna get uh, 352,000 and it doesn't have to be in gold it can be whatever they want it to be in but that's kind of the game plan what's really cool about this is that we were sorry I just got confused about where I was going right now we were able to do all this and pay them the gold back because of the facts we knew about the gold mine that we bought uh, they've been mining for 20 years on this site three to five ounces of gold a day they've been averaging uh, it's 1800 acres with geological studies that say that there's about 30 different places on there that we can mine gold so we know that at a minimum, we're going to keep doing what's happening there. And it'll be a good business. It'll make millions of dollars a year. The reason we're doing it is the upside that we can do a lot more. So either way, the lenders are getting their money back in two years. They're going to get paid royalties on gold. Between the royalties and the loans, they're going to make $200,000 in profit, plus get their hundred grand back. So it's a good deal. It's a win-win for everybody. Anyway, got to get in the Uber to get over to the South Terminal. That's my little finance lesson. I'll be back to you in a second. Here we go. Here we go again. <laughs> okay, so nothing we're doing on this project is proving to be easy. Uh, everything's a lot of work. So Will flew in from Toronto, I flew in from Victoria, Joe flew in from Comox. Joe is moving up there. He's gonna run the project on the ground. But our next challenge was how do we get there? Because uh, I'm on a very tight timeline and there's none of these little planes flying into Williams Lake till tomorrow. So we actually rented a small plane, a little propeller plane, a Beechcraft, which we're gonna get in about a half hour. So we had a half hour to kill. So I wanted to introduce you formally to my partners. Um, the three of us are the three people that actually own the company and we bought it together. And I chose these guys each for their own reason. First of all, Will Travis um, has a 30-year history in heavy equipment. Actually, Will, tell them who you are. Tell them what you're all about. <laughs> Why do you got to have such tough questions on a time like this? It's early morning on us over here in BC. How long have you been working with heavy equipment? What did you do before? Heavy equipment. So I hate to say it, but my ripe old age is almost 60. So I would say two thirds, if not better, in my life I've been playing with equipment. And you've you've been an operator. You worked for the provincial government, I think, Hydro One or something like uh, that. Basically, hydro, gas, and. Uh, 
individual gas and bell. Yeah, and one of the things I realized right away about a gold mine is that it's really not gold mining, it's construction. It really is. So everything revolves around heavy equipment. So on this trip, we're going to go up there and buy an excavator and a bulldozer and a rock truck and a gas truck and all this heavy equipment. And nobody in my world knows heavy equipment better than this guy. And so he's there. And now Joe, the reason Joe is the partner that's going to be on the ground. Well, tell them a little bit about you. Tell them about your background. Well, my background is um, I used to do drilling and gold exploration for oh, probably better part of about a decade and then I used to run heavy equipment doing uh, forest firefighting and water and sewer and rock crushing and aggregate and road building so yeah absolutely so Joe's gonna live up there and he's gonna run the site and take care of everything so we're gonna go up on this trip and the three of us together are gonna actually buy the equipment we're gonna probably spend somewhere between five and six hundred grand on this trip and then uh, Joe's gonna be the man on the ground that makes sure the equipment gets set up and everything's there and then Willie and I will be back out here at the beginning of April when we actually start mining. And of course, my side in all of this is I manage the overall business and raise the capital and do the budgets and keep everything running on track. So these are the three amigos that I've been telling you about. Uh, next time I come back to you in a second, we'll be jumping on the plane. Okay, so we're walking over to the private terminal where we're gonna get our private plane up to Williams Lake. And I thought I'd kind of talk to you a little bit about the unexpected. I have been running my own businesses and buying businesses and scaling businesses businesses for I want to say the better part of 30 years the biggest thing that I've learned in all my experiences in business is what really makes business owners successful is preparing for the unexpected and we had a big blow today <laughs> actually yesterday which was unexpected and we've already got a plan together about how we're gonna deal with it but I wanted to share it with you right now just so you can learn as much as we're learning as we learn it. So I want to talk to you about water. <laughs> so this placer mining that we're doing is a system of mining where you're literally starting to dig right on the surface. So it's in high areas where there's lots of gold and you dig it up from where it is, put it in a truck, dump truck, move it over to a wash station and you load all this dirt into what they call a wash station and you run water through it, which cleans it out and the gold is heavier than the water. Joe's moving up there, so he's got a whole bunch of crap. <laughs> Come on, Joe. <laughs> Used to be, come on, Willie. <laughs> so anyway, um, right now, Jim gets all of his water from um, a creek. And I was talking to him on the weekend and told him how we wanted to come up and buy enough equipment so that we could increase the daily yield from three to five ounces to upwards of 30 ounces. And that's what we want to do in phase one is, if possible, get up to 30 ounces. And in do so, doing so, proving that it's all legit. Well, it's all legit. We know we've got a mine that can produce three to five ounces a day, which is still millions of dollars a year, but we're buying this to scale it. So anyway, I was talking to him about it. We were talking about some of the equipment we're gonna have to buy to get the yield up. And he says, oh, there's one more thing I forgot to talk to you about. And I said, what? And he said, water. We don't have enough water to do 30 ounces a day. <laughs> We've been talking about this with him for months. And I said, oh, when were you gonna tell me about this? <laughs> So we did some research and we found out there's a major river, the Quinell River, that is really close to our property. It's about 400 feet away, 500, no, 400 meters away. Um, and we can put a pump at the river, pump the water out of the river that we need, put it up to the site and then return it after. But we have to get a permit to do this from the Ministry of the Environment. And that process normally takes months to do. So our first stop when we get up there is we're gonna go buy a new truck. Well, it's not a new truck, it's a used Toyota Tundra. That's gonna be our site vehicle for running around. And then our second stop is to go fill out an application and pay a fee, an application fee, to request a permit to pull the water out of the river. So lots of stuff going on here um, I think it's all gonna work out but it'll be interesting to see what happens it's not a jet but it is a little private plane it's gonna get us up there quicker and it just you know with my schedule being as crazy it is it just makes it easier so on board with us today we got Willie here Hey. There he is there, and there's Joe. Let's see if I can turn this thing around. There's Joe. We got our pilots up there in the front. We just turned on the engines. So we got some coffee, some drinks, and we'll just have a little fun. This is gonna be crazy. They say that the only reason you should use private planes is number one, you should buy a private plane if 
you make so much money that you're going to pay tax to the government, you can buy the plane instead. You should rent them in cases where time is the most important asset to you and you can move around faster because of it. That's why we're here. Okay, we just had a one hour flight. We just landed in Williams Lake. We're going to head inside and head into town to pick up our new truck. All right, so our first stop on this trip was to Lake City Ford and we bought this. This is a 2019 Toyota Tundra. Whoop, just fell off the step. Wanted to be able to give you guys a look at it. Toyota Tundra. And really what this is for is just to have a general vehicle around the site, right? So we're not really gonna be doing a ton of major things, but you know, getting parts, getting little things, little running around. Joe Briere is gonna be here full time, having a reliable vehicle that we can have for the company up here. And then of course, once we get everything set up, we're gonna have a little likely gold exploration logo on the door but for any of our lenders that see this video you can see she's in good shape it's a good looking vehicle 2019 so we saved some money with it next we're going over to the ministry of transportation or sorry ministry of the environment to apply for water permits all right now we're uh, driving down to likely we're in the first piece of equipment that likely gold exploration has bought and that's our 2019 Toyota Tundra pickup truck. There's Joe driving and there's Willie in the back where he's meant to be. Um, we're heading down to the site now. Talk you. you know, one thing I want to tell you guys um, as we're on our little drive here is that just like any other business I've ever started, there's troubles, there's challenges, there's challenges in everything. There's always going to be challenges. And I think that the more I dive into this, the more I run my other businesses, the more I realize that the real secret to success in life is not your ability to come up with great ideas. It's your ability to solve problems. And I think that's probably the most important part of this. So like I mentioned earlier, one of our challenges we are going to solve is the water issue. So if we want to, the way gold mining works in placer mining is you dig the dirt out and you put it into a they call it a wash plant, but it's basically uh, a receiver where you dump a bunch of dirt in it and you have fast flowing water that pushes the water, the rock and everything along. And the gold is heavier than the rock and the dirt. So it goes to the bottom and gets stuck in the mats. And then you pull out the mats afterwards and you get all the gold out of it. So obviously the more dirt we want to push, the more gold we can get, but that'll only happen with the water. So there's a couple things we're going to do to mitigate that risk. We've already had a good conversation with our team about it. We've got a course of action all, always figured out, already figured out. One of them is we're going to apply to the Ministry of the Environment to get a permit to get water right out of the river. So right now we get the water out of a stream and a, like a creek nearby. And we think that we can get enough water out of there to really do what we want to do this season. But we're going to apply for the permit to get water out of the river because that would solve all of our problems. We're gonna get that process started now because it can take anywhere from a month to a year to do it. So we don't wanna do anything to stop that process. But at the same time, we've already realized that there's a way we can um, increase the size of a, a, it's called the tailing pond where all the water goes afterwards uh, without um, interfering with our permit. Uh, so that we could potentially recycle the water at the same time. So a lot of great conversations going on. And then of course we, over lunch today, we confirmed the equipment that we're gonna buy. We're gonna buy a bigger wash station, we're gonna buy an excavator, a water truck, a fuel truck, and uh, a whole bunch of other shit too. <laughs> so we're on the way. I'll give you a little flip around. It's a beautiful country out here. Uh, it's in the, basically the basically right in the belly button of, Prince Edward, of uh, British Columbia. Uh, really beautiful forests and trees and countryside. And we're excited to be down here. So that's it for now. Uh, next time I check in, we'll be down in Likely. And uh, we'll likely be in the middle of buying equipment. All right, this is accommodations for day one. I'll just flip it around and show you guys what I'm doing. Paying the price, sacrificing for the mission. So this is my room. You can get a little feel for it. There's the heater. And here's the shower. 
Feels like a cottage. This is the local hotel in Likely, British Columbia. And there's the kitchen slash office. So let me wrap up day one for you here at the Likely BC. So what did we do today? We got the truck, ran into a couple little problems with that, that uh, in British Columbia they have a provincial insurance system. So we had to wait until I got recognized and the company got recognized so we could get the insurance for the truck. So we got stuck there, but we got the truck that we're going to have out here for the business. And then we met with uh, Jim, the owner we're buying the property from, and we put a game plan in for tomorrow. Um, tomorrow we're driving about 190 kilometers up to two cities. One's called Quinell, the other one is called Wells. And uh, we're going to buy equipment. Um, I'll definitely show you guys all about it as we're doing it. Um, our goal, like I was telling you before, the owner that we're buying the property from, the mines, 1,800 acres, it's been doing three to five uh, ounces of gold a day for 20 years. Uh, and it, the equipment we're buying with the property can give us the, it gives us that same ability. But the reason he never went further is he just didn't have the capital to do it. Um, but we know that the 1,800 acres is rich with gold. So right away, we're going to invest about, I would say somewhere between five and $600,000. And we're going to be buying uh, all the equipment we need to do that. So there's, so let me tell you a couple of the pieces we're going to buy. We're going to buy a new wash plant. Uh, and what a wash plant is, is basically the mechanical system that you dump the dirt in. It's called payload because, or pay dirt because it has gold in it. Uh, we put it into here and then we run like really high pressure water through it and it separates the dirt from the gold because the gold is heavier than the dirt and the water so the gold as it's being pushed through will fall down into these mats that grab the gold and hold it and so the first step is to do that it's called washing and all the gold will get caught in these mats and at the end of the day you take the mats out of the sluice and you take it into a controlled environment where you clean the mats and all the gold comes out of it and then you pick out all the big pieces of gold and then all the fine gold you basically evaporate all the water, dry it up, and boom, there's your gold. That's how this all works. So we're going to buy a new wash plant that will give us the ability to do about 150 yards of pay dirt per hour, uh, which on this site, it looks like there's about an ounce for every 100 yards of pay dirt. So 150 would be an ounce and a half. Um, but if you do 150 ounces, 150 yards an hour, and we go 15 hours a day, then you're looking at 2,000 yards in a day, um, which could be 20 ounces of gold. So that's the plan. So we're gonna buy enough equipment to do that. So the wash plant is one piece of it. Now the next part is having enough equipment to feed the wash plant fast enough. Uh, and this wash plant we're buying can take a lot. So we're gonna buy, we have one major dump truck on site. It's a big dump truck, but we need another one. Uh, and then we're going to buy another excavator with a big eight foot wide scoop on it. Um, and then we have two excavators on site. So one, two excavators will be digging the dirt, putting it into the dump trucks. The dump trucks move it over beside the wash plant and dump it. And then there's another big excavator there that picks it up and puts it into the wash plant. So we're going to buy another excavator, another dump truck. Now, because we're going to be moving so fast, we also have to be able to fuel these vehicles. So we're gonna buy a, a basically a gas truck, a big gas tank on a truck, and we'll leave it up by the road every morning and the gas company will come and fill it up and then we'll you know, fuel the trucks and the vehicles as they need them. So we're gonna buy a gas truck. We're also gonna buy a water truck. The next thing we have to buy is a bulldozer. We're gonna buy a D8 bulldozer, which is one of the biggest ones you can buy. And we need that to clean the land. So we have a company that's gonna come in and cut down all the trees. And then we use the bulldozer and other equipment to um, get all the, basically the trunks and the roots out of there so that we can start mining on it. And then we need, we have one big excavator, which is a big truck, big piece of equipment that has a big bucket on the front of it. 
um, and that's used to move the pay dirt around by the wash plant to make sure it's all being put into a pile so it can be stacked really quickly um, and also to prepare the land before the the loader sorry loaders excavators are the ones with the big bucket the loader is what pushes it so we're gonna buy a new loader um, so anyway what I just described to you <laughs> although I made it sound really simple is about six hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment and hopefully God willing you're going to see us buy all that tomorrow. I'm going to take you with me on site. We'll be talking about the equipment. I'll let you see what it's all about. And we'll have a lot of fun with it. And again, sitting here right now <laughs> in this really unique hotel room, um, this is where, as an entrepreneur, you've got to be self-motivated. You really do. Uh, because we haven't even started mining yet. We're spending all this money. We're doing all these things. And there's nobody that's going to keep me motivated but me. Uh, so yeah, that's probably the biggest learning lesson for anybody that's going through this stuff with us. Anyway, that's enough for day one. I'm going to get some sleep. And uh, we're going to start bright and early tomorrow morning at uh, 6 a.m. here. Which will be 10 a.m., 9 a.m back home i've got calls to do before we hit the road we're gonna hit the road at 8 a.m local time and you'll be with me okay just checking in with you for a second i just had to show you this area we're on our way to wells bc if you want to check it out on a map and we're going up there to buy a bunch of equipment a wash plant a loader and some other equipment but i just had to stop here let me turn the camera around see if this will let me do it and i'll let you read that for a second talks about what this area was but look at the view. It's just freaking gorgeous. One thing I'm happy about is that even just getting started with this gold mine, it's brought me back to a part of our country where I was born. And I really forgot about how beautiful this country is. Anyway, I gotta jump back in the truck. There's our beautiful new work truck. Uh, we're going to get on our way to Wells. Next time you see me, we'll be looking at a wash plant. Building pond like this here, you got no way of cleaning Yeah, I've got an island in the middle. Yeah. yeah. No, I got a, uh, a 892 25 foot leaks I use for. All right, here we are. We're in Wells, British Columbia, and we're on site with a company that I'm not going to name specifically, but we're looking at, these are called wash plants. Now, this is a D-Rocker wash plant. Um, it's listed for $200,000 right now. It's pretty well brand new. And essentially what happens with this thing is all of the pay dirt, so all of the dirt that has the gold in it, is literally put into this end of it, and it shakes it. It shakes all the big rocks out of it. And then all of the fine material with the gold in it slips into the bottom, into the sluice box. Then the other thing we're looking at up here, up on this big thing here, it's called a trommel. And the trommel uh, is on a, obviously, wheels, which is pretty cool. Uh, and the, what comes off of the D-Rocker goes into the trommel, and it's spun, and all of the fine gold goes right down onto the sluice box below it. That's where it's uh, collected. So it's pretty cool, and there's all kinds of other equipment out here we're going to be looking at, but we are going to leave here today with a contract to buy those two pieces of equipment right there. All right, now we're going up to look at an excavator. And of course, I'm the money guy that knows how to run a business, but I don't have a freaking clue what an excavator even is, but we're about to find it. <laughs> Okay, this is the only restaurant in town. It's also the hotel where we're staying, or motel or lodge or whatever you want to call it, but you can see she's a beautiful little spot. And we got my two business partners, co-owners, playing a little pool, and we're hanging out here. So I thought I'd uh, take a little break from our work today just to show you that we're having a little fun too. All right, this trip has been awesome. Uh, we're at jim and wendy's place right now this is the house that we're buying as part of the deal yeah i can come down here a little bit and you can see it. it is a miner's property there's no doubt about it uh jim 
uh, says there's probably hundreds of ounces of gold buried in the ground around here that he's lost over the years. So maybe we'll get a bunch of people up here with a metal detector someday. Uh, but we're here right now. Um, Joe and Willie are inside just going over some last minute plans before we head back to the airport. But uh, I'm going to go in here and join them and hang out and uh, we're going to get everything figured out. So stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you do. Lots of really crazy videos coming along. I'm going to go join these scoundrels right here.